Big thanks to 1.21 Gigawatts for putting that song together. It's a personal song for the Hub City Comedy Podcast, so big shout out to them. What's that? You want to know more? Well, go to facebook.com slash 121 gigawatts. Now, on with the podcast. All right. Hey, everyone. Yes, it's a long overdue Hub City Comedy Podcast. I'm your host, Mercer Morrison, and uh, with me is my guest... David Sarton. Yes, finally we are getting this podcast underway. We just had a lot going on uh, with the hurricane and things like that. Which, and uh, me being lazy. Yes, and well, both of us being lazy. We'll we'll try to say that we were busy, but not really. But um, bless you for your diplomacy. Oh yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll just get through some announcements real quick. This Saturday, uh, I forget when that is. I think it's the twenty first. Yes, September twenty first. Uh, myself. A uh, newcomer to the comedy to Hub City Comedy, Alex Robertson, um, Honoree Kemp, and Zach Dix, that is his actual name, will be at Island Strikes Bowling Alley. You know, uh, whenever I started comedy, I said, you know what, Dad, someday I'll make it big. I'm going to perform in the back of a bowling alley. So I really think, I'm really glad this is happening. But uh, September 21st at 10 p.m., Island Strikes Bowling in Gulfport. Uh, a bunch of people will be there. It'll be a fun time. And also, um, I need to re- do, redo my schedule because the 28th, there's actually two events. Uh, one of them is at the Big Easy Tavern in uh, Pensacola, and Brittany Purvis will be there, and maybe myself, but I just remember that I accidentally signed on for this uh, soul poetry thing that someone invited me to on the 28th as well. And then on the 29th, is Alchemy Tavern, which Brittany Purvis and I will both be at in Mobile. Uh, but you can find all of this on Facebook.com slash Hub City Comedy, Hub City Com- or Hub City uh, Thanks for listening. Oh, wait, no, we have a podcast to do. All right, David, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, my next big thing that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be participating in the Southeastern Comedy Arts Festival. That's going on October the 26th and the 27th. That's a weekend. And that's happening at the University of Mississippi up in Oxford. Um, It's going to be mostly improv and whatnot. My improv group, uh, we're trying to make an appearance there. We're uh, Pants Optional Improv. Uh, Stage Monkeys from USM will probably be there. The Uh, rival gang. The rival gang. My, My old team. Yes, no, um, it's about as rival. <laughs> the rivalry is about as intense as uh, sharks and jets. So, but go on. Essentially, yeah, I've, I've fought a few of them occasionally. Um, dance battles mostly, and each one of them has fallen. Yeah, they they don't dance very well. Um, besides that, the uh, cult of the stage monkey out of Lafayette will, I believe, bring a few people uh, west of Shake Rag out of Tupelo, um, and then uh, the. Ole Miss comedy troupe uh, LAFCO, they're the ones that are hosting it. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to be in Oxford or really bored and you don't mind making a three-hour drive to go watch comedy, then by all means come out. Uh, More details will come up on Facebook. Um, You'll probably see the Southeastern Comedy Arts Festival page pop up anytime within the next few days or so once they confirm more guests and whatnot. Well, it sounds sounds fun, but let me do a little... Uh, introduction. You may have heard me put him on uh, Facebook saying that there will be a podcast, but it's been long overdue. But uh, you've met Derek Copswa, now meet the man that sleeps 10 feet away from him. That's right, and we are on location in Derek and David's apartment. Yeah, they're a little... S- so much sex stink, I'm just saying. So, <laughs> too much sex stink. I'm actually yeah. sticking to the couch. I didn't really prepare for this and I'm utterly disgusted Febreze doesn't really break up the proteins no (laughs) no but I need some men in hazmat suits to come here (laughs) or maybe social services to take me away since you guys are bad parents but uh, (laughs) 
Anyway, uh, yes, you've met Derek, now meet his roommate, and one of the people who's in Pants Optional, and uh, I am sometimes a guest star on that. I can't make it all the time, but yes, meet David Sarton. Everyone, I'll add fake clap in later. Hi. <laughs> yes. But, uh, David, why don't you tell me how you got your start in comedy? Because your, your comedy actually goes back uh, a little bit even further than Jamie, I think. Uh, yeah, sort of. Um, well, I first started doing comedy just in general. Mm -hmm. um, I started with improv. Um, yeah, I, well, I was like, so... give us uh, some date lines. And okay, stuff. sure. Um, all right. Uh, I'm August... writing a bibliography, so I need... Uh... Yeah. For the Wikipedia page, yes. I dig. Mm -hmm. um, October 2003 is when I started. Mm -hmm. um, I was sort of a theater kid growing up. I did uh, I did a production of uh, Christmas Carol at my junior college because I was the only one who could fake a British accent. So they put me in as Scrooge typecasting. Um, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, this man has magnificent sideburns. Thank you very much, yes. by the way. They're... Um, I actually cut them a little bit at your request, but um, I, I mean totally off though, or is it like Samson and like you lose your powers? I I get fat again if I did that. Um, that but is the worst side effect. <laughs> it, it's you know it, it's really terrible, but it takes a lot of energy to keep these sideburns going. It's kind of like how in Dragon Ball Z when Goku would power up way too hard and. Yeah, it's sort of like, okay, yeah, okay, I've lost the audience, I apologize. Let me the audience, the imaginary, it's so bad he lost the imaginary audience. All no, five of them that will be listening to yes. this. <laughs> Actually, a lot of them were listening, it seems like our views keep going up and up, because I put up the Derek one, and then I put up the Brittany one, then I put up the Jamie one, and it seems like every single time we actually do one, although now I feel like I need to start from scratch since... Uh, since it took us so long to get back on track, but each one they keep getting more and more views. The more and, you know, and, and, and I'm ascending. not I'm not exactly star power here, but no. Um, <laughs> getting back to uh, October 2003, um, I just transferred into USM from uh, Holmes up in Jackson. Well, mm -hmm. uh, the Ridgeland actually, but right there in Jackson. Anyways, um, transferred here and. I wasn't really doing much of anything. I was doing the same things I did in junior college, which was staying mostly to myself, doing nothing. And then um, I was at an honors college meeting, and this one girl who I thought was cute said, Hey, you seem funny. You should do improv. Who was it? Uh, her name was uh, I'm a Katie. gossip Gertie, so you got uh, Her name know. was uh, Katie. Um, I can't really remember her last name. It's changed or is it that, Or is that for legal purposes? No, I, I really can't remember her last name. Uh, it's been so long, but... And uh, the court papers and stuff. No, but go on. And the court papers. Yeah. I think her husband's a lawyer or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, so I tried out and I made it onto their reserves team because I was, you know, okay, not very funny. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, um, they found out I could sing and I made it onto the main team, which worked really well for the one or two sing games that we ever did when I was doing improv. Um, but uh, I was with the, the Stage Monkeys at USM for uh, eight years. I actually left just last um, last May. I decided I was um, kind of too old to be there. It's, it, it's really an eye-opener when you're 28 years old and you're doing improv with people who are eight or so years younger than you. That's a really um, kind of a weird experience. So me, well, I'll get to that in a little bit. So me and Michael Rucker... Yeah. Um, we started up an improv troupe called Pants Optional, which mm -hmm. you know you mentioned a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're part of it, uh, Brittany, yeah. who um, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago, a month, however the hell long ago that was. Probably um, years. Begun. Probably years yeah. at this point. Yeah, um, she's she occasionally shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Kenny, who's another comedian who we have, she's a member. Uh, Chris Townsend. We all know she's just sleeping with the with the lead singer. She's just sleeping with Rucker. Oh uh, no! I lived <laughs> I lived with them for a while. There's no sleeping going on. Yeah, um, mostly snoozing. <laughs> I hope her dad doesn't hear that. Oh god! <laughs> but no, uh, and then a uh, local lawyer, Chris Townsend, is also a member of our group. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, um, you know, we kind of got a thing going there. Um, now, as far as doing stand up goes, um, I started that again at the behest of a girl. Uh, this one was uh, one who I look up to as sort of a big sister. Her name is Katie Horahan, but um, 
She goes by Jersey. Anyways. Um, All right. <laughs> she, kind of a jump a little bit, but... Uh, a little bit. I, yeah. I do that sometimes. I, yeah. I, anyways, uh, her name is Jersey, and she said, Hey, David, why don't you come out with us to this open mic going on at St. Elmo's? Which now called the tavern. Yeah. Um, but um, so I did this open mic. It was me, Jersey, and this other friend of ours, Sean Cox, and I did a two-minute set. Not to be confused with the uh, famous Southern Miss announcer, John Cox. You know, I made that I made that mistake a few times. <laughs> like I really did when I first heard Sean uh, John Cox. I thought, holy shit, I know that guy. <laughs> I have no idea who John Cox is though. I know who he is. I don't know. Yeah. Who. Anyways, I saw him in public. Like you couldn't. You had to point me out to him in public. But I know the voice. If he spoke, I would know exactly who it is. But go on. I'm imagining Sean. he has a face for radio. Anyways, yes. me, Sean, and Jersey. We did this open mic, and I did two minutes, sort of riffed, uh, did a really lame reference to the forty year old virgin, and uh, uh, got a laugh or two, and mm-hmm. realized, hey, I could do this for a while. And that's how I got started doing stand up. That was. Um, I have no idea what part of 2005 that was. It was I all think. a blur to me, man. It really was. 2005 was kind of a blurry year, you know? Those the, are the heroin years. Well, yeah, I, I did a lot of heroin post-Katrina, what can mm-hmm. I say? Um, but yeah, that's a that's how I sort of got my start. Uh, as a and your track from, marks. No, but go on. Oh, yeah, yeah. the track marks <laughs> came from... Uh, it, was, um, it was the best of times, and it was the needless to... Times. Oh, um, but it was all in vain, wasn't it? <laughs> the folks at home can't really tell, but I'm staring daggers at Mercer yes, right now. See it. That's um, why. That, that's that's because you beat me to the punchline. That on was that nervous laughter. That was a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's how I got my start as a result of women saying, "Hey, you're funny. You should do this." But uh, didn't you say you also? Uh, when did you transition from the tavern to the uh, thirsty hippo? Uh well. It was almost immediately, actually. Um, we only did the one open mic at the uh, at the ta- at the tavern St. Mm-hmm. Elmo's because it was just a random one-off open mic they had. Um, Jersey then dragged me the following Wednesday to uh, the open mic at the Thirsty Hippo, and it was the most awkward fucking experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you remember what it's like, but to let those of you at home know what it's like, okay. Imagine, if you will, imagine about five or six dudes, one lady. Um, the dudes know so either... So that one dude could be a lady. Possibly. Yes. I, I couldn't really tell. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a close enough feel uh, look. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, but no, um, doing really mediocre to awful covers. And then you have two or three people, dick jokes... There's a reason we went to shenanigans immediately after every uh, every performance. It's you know, the hippo, which, which actually continues to this, to this day because you because I heard you went to uh, shenanigans after this latest. Yes, I mic. I did actually. Um, I got randomly uh, dragged out by three of the three, three of the, women. Um, women can just convince you to do shit. I really don't have much self control. I, I think that's. Um, I think that's why I got so fat for such a long time. Um, but yeah, it's apparently whenever I have a bad night, I just go to uh, a karaoke place like Shenanigans and hey, I sang this song that someone else did and I did okay. Maybe I'm not a bad performer. Yeah, but go- getting back to the Thirsty Hippo thing, it's, yeah. it's a nightmare, a waking nightmare. Yeah, it was... It was um, it, uh, to be fun, it, uh, to be fair, it was you know it was fun. Uh, Brad, one of the guys who owned it, he was very, uh, you know, he was very decent to us. He would always try and make it so that, or at least for a time, he tried to make it so that all the comedians performed together, because um, I it is really awkward to go right after a musician has performed, because mm-hmm. uh, you'll hear this one woman who has these great soul wrenching songs. And then I come on stage and talk about how Donkey Kong's like Reaganomics. That doesn't really play very well. No, it doesn't. It's not like, yeah, I'm going to 
share you this song, you know, I was in a deep, dark place. And you walk up there, it's like, oh, man, let me tell you about my balls. And, like, it's, it's literally just like that awkward of a transition. Well, coincidentally, that was actually the first open mic I did. Let Speaking of getting your heart torn out, oh, my balls. Speaking of taking it nice and slow, I was with your mother last night. Oh, snap. No. That's not, that's not true. I've never uh, known uh, a yeah, touchable woman. The thirsty um, hippo. I sometimes miss them because, like, that was one of the only seedy bars in... Ha- and it wasn't, like, seedy in the sense of, like, danger. It was just seedy in the fact, like, the way it was built. Like, you went down sort of this narrow corridor into this sort of darkened room. And I, yeah. I've, I've been to the new Thirsty Hippo, and it, it's cool and everything. I like what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. But um, I really miss the old Thirsty Hippo. It was, oh, yeah. There was just this atmosphere about it, and... I'm, I'm in the sign. courtyard, you know? In the courtyard where people could smoke. But I will never forget the worst part about going to the Hippo for me mm-hmm. was um, it was one of the places where people would go when they wanted to smoke inside a bar. Um, so every time... And I smoking went, isn't cool, kids. No. No, it's... Um, really, it's not. But um, no, going into a, a, this smoke-filled bar, I would never leave with my eyes not burning. Um. Okay, I, I don't like really... a weekend in Cancun to me. Oh my no. <laughs> yeah, sorry. There's no real joke to that. It's just mm. I hate performing in the bars where people smoke. Nothing against people who smoke. It's just <laughs> but like... everything against people who smoke. Well, everything's already against people who smoke. I feel it would yeah. be bad if I pile shit onto them. Yeah, I, I kind of have the. Same problem as well whenever I perform in bars. I mean, it didn't bother me too much, but uh, I will sort of miss it. And plus, it was downtown, and uh, I really haven't had a chance to explore the new Thursday Hippo as much as I've wanted to. But uh, So how long were you... Did you go anywhere else besides the Hippo? Um, Let's see. Let's see. Some other places I performed before I hooked up with Hub City Comedy. Uh, Mm -hmm. There was Mug Shots. Oh, mug shots. This huh. was this was back before they burned down and yet mysteriously were able to get all the uh, awards they got yeah. out of the building in time. Anyways, I'm not going to say anything <laughs> about that for legal reasons. Um, but no, um, I performed at mug shots in an open mic. There was this uh, one guy who was in a cover band uh, called Hillcrest. And they would perform a lot of local stuff. And he hosted this open mic and he told a bunch of us, hey, you should come out and do it. I did it one night, and uh, midway through my set, this guy who, I kid you not, looked exactly like what Larry the Cable Guy would look like if he weren't a complete caricature but were an actual person. Right. And acted kind of like it, too, and was not funny like it, too. (laughs) Um, Jumps on stage, interrupts me, and tells me to get off stage. Uh, the audience booed him off stage, so that's when I realized the you know but, the power well, of rock. So this was an open mic, so this so like no one that. But how did you hear about it? That's what I'm trying to ask. Um, it's more just I got dragged into it by a woman. That apparently happens a lot. No, friggin' um, a. How many times <laughs> is this story? Or I mean, like, sheesh. Well, I didn't say I'm a very. It's like an overused plot element. But go on. Well, my life is kind of hackneyed, you know. Um, <laughs> In case you're wondering about those grumbles, ladies and gentlemen, Mercer's being sat on by my roommate's cat. <laughs> by my roommate, no. Yeah, that that would be awkward. Uh, but no, by my roommate's cat, Gizmo, who's sometimes friendly. But anyways, uh, Jersey had heard about the uh, open mic at the Hippo, and not the Hippo, the... Uh, mugshots. Mugshots, thank you. And uh, we went, and it was a thoroughly awkward experience, but... It was the first time I ever got paid for doing stand-up. I was paid in beer. I received two, <laughs> I received two free red stripes and a Bud Light t-shirt that I used to clean my car the next day. <laughs> so you just decided then there was like, this would be a good rag. Essentially. I, I figure if it's got Bud Light on it, it's probably got some absorbency power. <laughs> yeah, true. But I, so how long in between... so? Was that your last gig before you decided to uh, hook up with Hub City Comedy? Uh, no, actually, that was a long time ago. Um, my uh, my hookup with Hub City Comedy, I remember the day, actually. 
It was December twentieth, two thousand twelve. So this is a good four or five years after my uh, two thousand twelve. Ten, two thousand ten. About to say like it's been a Mr. long day. Future. No. Yeah, I um, no. I'm Doctor Who, um, yeah. but no, uh, December twentieth, two thousand ten. It was my um, that was my twenty eighth birthday. Me and a friend of mine, Christopher Napier, we went out to an open mic that you know that was going on at the Martini Spot now McGregor's Pub. Right. And uh, that's actually when I met Jamie, and I think I might have met you for the first time there I as was well. Probably there, yeah. Um, I'm all I'm there every week. I got nothing else to do with my life. <laughs> that's essentially what's happened to me as yeah, well. You've on kinda, Mondays, you you fuckers have kind of cursed me with that. that. But um, no, that's uh, Jamie said. Hey, you should keep on coming out. And the very next year, I decided, hey. I haven't done stand-up in years. I'll get back into it because mm-hmm. I kind of retired from stand-up for a while. Was there any reason behind that? or? Um, it was I got tired of writing new material and the stuff I had wasn't really hitting very well. Mm-hmm. So, And plus I went through kind of a dark, depressing period for a while. But and why, I mean, if you don't mind asking, why did that happen? Uh, the dark, depressing period or the... Uh, or the not hitting... No, I mean the dark and depressing. Okay, yeah, period. sure. Um, well, it, the period between when I graduated from college and when I started going to uh, to open mic was kind of a dark one for me. Uh, among other things, I started working at my job. Uh, I work at a, a hospital, which I shall not name. Um, There's only like two in town, so you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Yeah, yeah you have kind of a 50 Anyways, um, it's kind of depressing work. It's uh, it's an office job, and it, it pays the bills, but you know, I mm-hmm. never leave work thinking, damn, I'm inspired. I leave work thinking, damn, I wish I were fat again so I could eat what I want. <laughs> But, Ring um, dings, where are you? No, <laughs> tasty cakes. I need you so bad. Oh, but man. um, but I ended up gaining a lot of weight, and um, my mother lost her job at one point mm-hmm. and had to go live, you know, in Jackson. And then my mom had a heart attack in two thousand seven, which really mm-hmm. sidelined me for a while. Um. But 2010 was kind By of... By the way, guys, we have an open mic at Sideline... No, okay, but, but go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> you bastard. No, but... um. So, uh, 2010 rolled around, and 2010 was actually sort of a rebirthing year for me. So there was a three-year period where you kind of just went through some, some stuff. I went through some bad stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, had a brief fling with a girl, brief relationship... Uh, but no romantic, you know, stuff that really was built to last. Unfortunately, mm. still have it to this day. But that's another story. Right. Um, anyways, uh, 2010 is when I started uh, changing my life up again. Um, uh, in fact, I remember the day was uh, February the 21st was the day I first started exercising uh, or living healthy. Again. And what what caused you to finally be like, you know what, today's well, the day. Well, uh, the previous weekend, um, actually it was February the 20th, because uh, the previous Sunday, I had, um, uh, which was February the 14th, Valentine's Day, I went to my friend Stephen and Ginger's wedding. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, they were Mutual actually... Mutual friend of ours. Right, oh, yes. But yeah, I, we, um, we were in the improv troupe together, and also former roommates of mine, and you know, good friends of mine, and I was at their wedding... I looked at a picture of myself, and I was pale and kind of obscuring the giant statue in the background, which was a very awkward and unpleasant experience. So I, um, I joined a program called Marathon Makeover, and I started exercising. And I think what kept me exercising is I paid $500 for this program, and I said, damn it, I'm not going to quit something I paid $500 right. for. Um, Did a woman get you to go with the program? Hang on, let me think. (laughs) The answer will probably be yes. Well, there's a woman that was heading it up, but... (laughs) There you go. There's your answer. Yeah, that's kind of your answer. (laughs) She was already married at that point, though, so I I, kind of shut off my radar to how I felt about her romantically. She's, you know, cool people, by the way. But, um, no, I... uh, 
I ended up doing the marathon program. I've run a couple of marathons, uh, lost a grand total of 70 pounds, and uh, at the end of that year, hooked up with Hub City Comedy for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, started up an improv troupe with a good friend of mine. Um, had a few relationships that began and ended. Cause yeah, we've I'm, all done that. I mean, I've done the same as well. Maybe that's something we'll get into. But that's sort of your uh, thing now. So that leads us to today, okay. I guess. But, um, like, what all, like, what, what's what been so far your favorite gig? My favorite gig? Um, it'd probably have to be, uh, there's a, um, hmm... Probably my favorite gig is one that I did in uh, Ocean Springs. There's a place there called uh, Mosaic's Tapas Bar. Mm -hmm. Tapas! I always have to emphasize that to people because when I say I went to a tapas bar at work, my boss chastises me and suspends me for a day. And they ask you where it is. Yeah, and then can't believe you, but what's that address again? And then when I tell them it's Ocean Springs, they. uh, uh, fire me for sexual deviancy. Um, <laughs> what is that? What is up with that? Like, for some reason, I just hear, like, Gulfport, Ocean Springs, just anywhere on the coast is just, like, a brothel, apparently. I've never I've never even seen it. And I want someone to prove it, okay? You know, I'll be there this weekend. <laughs> no. You know, I, I lived on the coast for a brief time when I was a baby, and I never once experienced the nightlife then. I guess I was, you know, too young. But, um... Mm. But no, it was a show in Ocean Springs at Mosaics. Uh, the crowd was really receptive. I actually uh, made one of my best friends... Uh, well, like, conceptive. I mean, sheesh. I see what and you did yes. there, you motherfucker <laughs> yeah. Chinese dentist. Um, <laughs> but no, um, I actually met a very good friend of mine uh, there for the first time, uh, a girl named Vicky, who... You know, if she's listening, hi, hi, Panda, how are you? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, she's sort of the, she comes to a lot of our comedy shows whenever they're on the Oh, yeah, coast. yeah, good people, good people. Mm-hmm. But um, mainly just because I was surrounded by a lot of people that I enjoy being around. Um, mm-hmm. Like, that was, Derek was there. I think you were there at the first show. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You were, um, I believe Nathan was there as well. So, you know, a God lot of rest my, his soul. Ah, uh, yes. May he rest peacefully in uh, whatever shithole town in Texas he's currently teaching in now. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. How it's are like, you? It's like outside uh, a really big city. I don't even know where it is. Well, well maybe we'll ha- like Skype combo him in one day. But, uh, That'd be nice. So you like that gig because of uh, the Sen- camaraderie. I yeah, guess. sentimental reasons. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, as far as... As far as a quality gig, one where I got a good response from the crowd, and one that I feel I did, you know, one of the best shows I could, I guess I'd have to say the uh, when I opened up for Sean Patton at uh, at what was once the Bottling Company. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was uh, that was one of my favorites because it was me, uh, David W. Smith. Uh, who was the other guy? Was it Cassie? Was that his name? Cassie Hanahan or something? I wasn't, I wasn't there for that one. I forget where it oh. was. Well, uh, some guy from New Orleans. I think his name was Cassie. Really funny. And then, you know, Sean, who utterly dominated the stage. And That's what I heard. I hate I missed it. I think that may have been when I was visiting New York for... It's possible. Yeah. That might have been... I think that might have been during your New York trip, yeah. Yeah. But, um... And I thought I did a bad show. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I heard a few laughs from the audience, but no good gut laughs. And but I, few people, a lot of people came up to me later on and said, "David, that was the best set I've ever seen you do," mm-hmm. and that was, you know, that's that. Apparently, that was nice. So, um, but yeah. Um, okay, I ran out of steam. To okay, get through that. Well, I get, I get. Well, I thought you were about to say something prolific, but uh, wait, hold for editing. All right. Now, but um, what has been your worst gig? My worst gig? Um, mm-hmm. hmm, let's see. I know there's been one. Um, like one gig that you oh, think about and you just don't even want to. I know remember. exactly when it is. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't remember the exact date. Okay, so I don't know exactly when it is. Mm-hmm. But, um, okay, this was a Thirsty Hippo gig. It was just a random open mic. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a... 
there was a local musician there, a good guy named Julian Vu. He does this. Uh, he did this thing at the time where he had one of those little loop box thingies where you'd record one soundtrack and then have it play over while you record another thing. Yeah. And you'd get a whole band playing at an open mic. And he got the audience to laugh more than I did that night. Jeez. And I remember being so pissed off for the rest of the week that um, the lesson didn't sink in that apparently my problem was not that my material wasn't good. My problem was that my delivery sucked, which has always been kind of a sticking point for me is, you know, Uh I work too hard on on my material and not hard enough on delivering it in a way that the audience will enjoy. Right. So so that's one gig you don't remember, but uh, you do have sort of a, a different style and stuff like that from everyone else. And so like where, like who are your influences and like where does your sort of uh, comedic prowess come from? Hmm. Well, um, my influences, uh, I get a lot of influences from older comedians. Like uh, I was a big fan of uh, Woody Allen, for example. Mm-hmm. And I know that's such a stretch. Uh, this nebbish, almost Jewish-looking guy influenced by Woody Allen. Uh, yeah, I can't. I couldn't make the connection until now, until you uh, just um, said it. But uh, I'm not that strongly influenced by Woody Allen because a lot. Um, cause but very Jewy. Very Jewy, yes. yes. But um, <laughs> but uh, Woody Allen is his his style. I kind of seem influenced by, but. His delivery is a little different from mine because he focuses a lot less on improvisation. In fact, he did this CD on comedy where he talked about improvisation being kind of a waste for performers. And yet, that's my bread and butter. That's well, what, why did he say it was a, a waste? Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how he put it. Um, essentially, that an audience is paying to see you at your absolute best. And they want to see a really well polished show. And if you throw in these random little bits, it's just kind of fluff. True. Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with that, but I, I guess that makes sense, seeing as how I've got more of an improv background than stand up. Yeah, well, I mean, like it, it depends on I think the the show that you see. Like if you go yeah. in to obviously see whose lines it anyway, yeah. Then you're gonna see. Uh, sometimes I think even that's sort of scripted. I think it probably oh, yeah. is. There, there's a, there's sometimes an element of scripting in some more popular forms of improv. Yeah, but I, I think if you are gonna go see an improv show, then you'll be into that. But obviously for stand up, I think it, it'll be. You know. I think one of my bigger influences too is uh, Eddie Izzard, because um, mm-hmm. he's got a very improv heavy set, and I, I look at that and I think, yeah. I could do that if I had the balls to go on stage and not have mu- that much prepared. But no, he, I think he does a fairly he- heavy improv stand up. Mm-hmm. Um, that, and of course, I grew up with Robin Williams and that manic energy, which is the exact opposite of what I bring to the stage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't bring manic at all. I, I don't really know a lot of comedians who do, and, and here, who bring very manic energy. I guess sometimes some shows I'm really up for it, but I'm trying to more, like, down approach now. Yeah, you, you got kind of you got kind of more of a laid back approach these days mm-hmm. compared to where you were when when I first started seeing you. You had maybe I'm just slowly dying inside. Well, you are getting older, so yes, yeah. Mercer, you are slowly dying. <laughs> in, in, in a way, yes. That's but, a sad fucking fact to face, isn't it? <laughs> sometimes, yes. Sometimes, I guess that may lead us into. Uh, the next thing that I usually ask, but like, where, like, do you have any big sort of goals for comedy, or like, where where do you see yourself or anything? Hmm. I, I've actually thought about that a lot recently. Um, I I don't know what I see myself doing with comedy. Um, I I've sometimes I'll see it as a means to an or as a, an end unto itself. I'll think I want to become a professional comedian. I want to go off to New York or or L.A. or somewhere like that. Have you ever been to, like, have you ever traveled out of town and done comedy or anything like that? Um, only a little bit. I've, um, I've done a few improv shows out of, uh, I did some, at some meetings of the Stage Monkeys in, uh, San Diego and, uh, Oh, well, and how did that go? Like, how'd um, you get involved in that? Well, um, 
the stage monkeys that I was with at USM is actually one of many uh, stage monkeys troops throughout the country. Uh, a lot of them are college based, like right. uh, our sister troop in Lafayette is based out of the University of Louisiana. Um, then, of course, the stage monkeys at USM. Uh, there's one based out of Carbondale, Illinois. Um, and then there's uh, one in D.C., one in Chicago, and then there's one that my friend Chris George started up in San, out in San Diego, not mm-hmm. really up per se. Um, and every year, or every other year, we get together for something called Barrel of Monkeys, where we, um, and for a brief time, we would offer some public performances. We've since kind of shied away from that, making it just sort of a get-together for old monkeys right. and whatnot. But um, I performed a sort of show for a small group of people in Washington, D.C., which really cool town. Um, at least what little I saw of it. Um, I didn't get to the part where, you know, I saw the government or um, the shootings that apparently happened in Washington, D.C., but right, yeah. uh, the art district was really neat. Um, and then San Diego, I went there for a while, or like a weekend, and performed with the group there. But well, was there sort of like an intimidation factor or anything? Like this is like, you know, you're traveling out of town or anything like that? Um, yes and no. It was a, On the one hand, it was a different audience. Uh, it's different audiences that I don't normally know. But it's also a bunch of people I've done improv with in the past who I know and have a great deal of respect mm-hmm. for who presumably have a great deal of respect for me. People that... That's what you think. uh, That's what their Facebook pages tell me. Yeah. Well, we know how Facebook lies. Mm -hmm. What? I don't even know what you're talking about. But, I mean, uh, so far that's been my experience whenever I've done stand-up and stuff like that. I've I've yet to do improv out of town, and I'm definitely Mm -hmm. not on your or Michael's or anyone else's level and perhaps optional or even uh, stage monkeys or anything like that. But, uh, Mm -hmm. like... I've always been sort of intimidated before I get on stage, but I was just wondering if that sort of transcended also to improv. But then again, I guess well, you have other people around. Well, here's a, yeah, that's the thing about improv. Um, while on one hand it's really intimidating to do improv because you have nothing prepared, chances are, unless you're doing a one-man improv show, which I have seen before, you're going to have at least one other person on stage to catch your sorry ass if you fail. Right. And that helps you to make uh, take a lot more risks than you do with stand up where unless you've got a two person group like you know there's some like Sloven and Allen and uh, Nichols and May. And, I do actually know Sloven and Allen so yeah, they're quite funny but um, but those are exceptions to the rule. Most of the time when you see someone doing stand-up, it's one person on stage. They've got this theoretically carefully calculated bit of uh, you know, bits mm-hmm. that they do. And, and that, to me, is actually a lot more intimidating than doing improv. But again, that could just be, you know, I'm more comfortable doing improv because I've done that for so many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, coincidentally, and to go back to your earlier question about have I done performances outside of town, uh, besides um, besides performances here in Mississippi, I've done um, maybe I've done two uh, stand up performances um, outside of Mississippi, and those were both in blah, 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 in Louisiana. Right. Um, the first at the um, or was it? At the La Nuit Theater, which is... And they had an open mic on... Yes. One. In New Orleans? That'd be the one. Yes. We... It, yeah. That, that's I guess that's sort of just all around for comedy, whether it be stand-up or improv. Or yeah, it was... Like um, it was it was okay. That was when I was first dipping my toe back into the waters of doing stand-up. And also when I first started losing weight back in early 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, it was okay. Not great, but Okay. And uh, then I performed at the Southeastern Comedy Arts Festival in 2010, which was hosted in Lafayette. Right. Um, also a very receptive crowd, and the only uh, the only performance I know of that I have that's recorded on YouTube. Um, except but you for, tried desperately to get them to take it down. Well, I, I did try <laughs> some threatening letters, yeah. but uh, that didn't seem to help because they just posted nude pictures that they found of me. <laughs> That you willingly took. I saw that. No, but uh, so you've been. I get 
some a question that is sort of like been boiling up inside me. Like, which do you find more enjoyable, uh, stand up or improv? Um, improv, I definitely find more enjoyable than stand up. And um, like it, any reason or anything like that? Well, yeah, there's a there's a certain camaraderie that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Um, with stand up, I really enjoy stand up. Don't get me wrong, but I, I see with stand up. I take all this time to come up with all these bits, and it's it gets a little bit dull to write, and then cross out what I'm what I've written and say that's not funny. Go back and try again, and it's a constant refreshing trying to do you know trying to see if this bit needs to be edited or what. Um, meanwhile, with improv, it's. It's a great building, you know, community building type thing because it's you and a bunch of people that you theoretically know and trust very mm-hmm. well, like I do with, you know, like I did with uh, the Stage Monkeys, like I do with Pants Optional. Right. It's there's a more community oriented thing. You've got this group of people who are friends and you do improv together and it's funny and it's great. Um and it, and it feels good and I feel like I'm funnier when I'm going off the cuff than I do when I'm going by scripted material. And again, that's probably just because that's the most experience I've had with comedy. You know. hey, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's just a, a different amount of things. I mean, I'm nowhere near you guys are. I kind of have the opposite feeling. Like, I do, I do enjoy improv and stuff, but I guess I enjoy stand-up a little more because it is sometimes the freedom of if you have the momentum going then you can improv off jokes here and there and uh, kind of rip on the crowd and stuff and uh, but uh, most of all it's just you and you're getting all the attention and I love just getting it now <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah I think that's why we all do it Mercer well yeah that is, that is we all that, just like that attention it's well it's not bad attention like the weird thing is for me is that I don't know how to deal with I don't like negative attention. Like, I don't like having sympathy towards me. I mean, I don't know if you're like this and this is like completely off topic of what the podcast is, but I don't like any sympathy coming towards me and I don't know how to deal with certain stuff. Like, I always try to deal with it with sort of uh, coping with it with humor. I don't know. Mm. And that could be a problem. I don't know if you have that. A little bit. A little bit. I I think we we all have a little bit of problem coping with people feeling bad for us <laughs> yeah because i mean like you can't I, i've spent the past 29 years of my life trying to accept the fact that uh people feel bad for me sometimes and they have no reason to hmm. well they might have some reason to i do have kind of a pathetic life but um i think we all yeah no, none of us are rock stars that's the weird thing though we think we live People think that uh, we're... I don't know. I've seen some of the people in our group who think they are. Who? Well, no, I'm not even going to ask you about it because this, this isn't about <laughs> gossip. But I think we could. But that I, Michael I, Rucker is yeah, such a rock star. That fucking faggot. Oh, gosh. That guy, man, what a selfish a-hole. No kidding. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we do, I guess, I guess some people just get that sort of egotastic yeah. and stuff. I mean, uh, God knows, like... If you do get on like the A level, like where uh, so many have stood, like Steve Martin or Bill Cosby and people like that, you know, like uh, like how they would act, you know, because I mean, if you get it, I think if you get a big head, like just being in the local scene, then you really don't have any hope. Yeah, in and, comedy, and I, I desperately try and avoid that. I, I try and keep a very egalitarian uh, view on things like I'm no better than anybody else who comes out and does stand up it's I may have you know, I may have done this more you know for a long right. time but that doesn't mean crap cuz I've known people who've been at my job for uh you know for over a decade who absolutely suck at their job people who I wouldn't want to register me for anything mm mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah. that's sort of a non sequitur, and I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, no, but I mean, I, I guess I do see what you're saying. Like, you pretty much you do have to keep a level head about yourself. Like, no matter yeah. how, because I mean, like, I think I've told many people this. Like, you can have just a string of open mics and gigs where it all goes well. Everyone's laughing with you. You think you're on top of the world, and then you have that one gig or open mic where you just fall flat on your face, and you gotta. You gotta prepare for that because there have been times where I've gotten like a huge head 
by myself. Not like I don't have one already, ladies. But uh, <laughs> but I I don't know. I get to this point where I think like you know what, man? Yeah, I should. You know, like my name should be on the marquee, even though we don't even have one. But then like. All My name should be on the one pamphlet that we hand out. Yeah. yeah can, I, can I get that back? That's what we always ask. Can you just look at that? And... It's laminated. I need that back. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could fax it to me later. No, but uh, yeah, then I fall flat on my face on a, on a gig or something like that. You know, I kind of did it with um, the, I don't know, I did a gig in Perdido recently and I was like on top of the world. Like I never, I literally stayed out until about 3 a.m. Literally just because people were... Uh, pass me up left and right and then I just kind of I, I now get the feeling like oh man I'm going to have to come down from this and then the following Monday I did this I did the open mic and you know only really one joke out of the two really socked everyone and the rest kind of got like pitter patters and laughs but yeah, I, I find that open mic night is one of the ultimate equalizers because mm -hmm. that's an ever changing crowd if you if you do stand up and open mic is the is the probably the best way you can find to cut your teeth and get yourself you know right. in for it because the crowds are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Like um, with the exception of a few regulars that come in, I almost never see the same people come in every you know every week. Right. And it's um, okay. I know that sounds stupid. Besides the people that come in every week, yeah. I don't see people come in every week. Um, <laughs> I never really realized until you just pointed it out. <laughs> the first rule of tautology club is the first rule of tautology club. Ah. But, uh, um, but no, um, open mic is the ultimate equalizer because people are not necessarily there to see you. They are either there to drink, which happens a lot of times, right. which kind of happened to me last week. Yeah. Or they're there to see some other schmuck that they know who said, hey, you should come out and listen to me tell jokes. Or, mm -hmm. hey, I should tell a joke before we go back to my place and have lewd, disgusting sex. <laughs> uh, I don't Mercer. think that there's anything. Who's, what, who have I done that to? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't know because they refuse to uh, give their names. Yeah. Uh, they're on uh, registries and stuff. But uh, I guess... <laughs> Where would you want Hub City Comedy to go? I'd like to see us do a lot more regional shows with other um, comedians around. I mm -hmm. see that we already do quite a bit of stuff. I know we've, um, I know a couple of the guys go out to Mobile and do a right. lot of shows with William Masters, which is cool. And we've done a lot of shows with Mac Hard. Who? Where's she based out of? Uh, she is. Oh man, she's somewhere in Mississippi because she was in the New Orleans area, but. Uh... Man. Yeah, I forget, but they can. But, but yeah, yeah. We've, um, and it's been a while since we've done a show with any of the Jackson folks, hasn't it? Because I know we we used to do quite a bit of shows here and there with them, guys like you know Mark Brooks and the Mark. Uh, Mark, I think is uh, taking a break. And he's uh, being called out on this podcast, viewed uh, by fifty people at the most. Mark Brooks, if you are listening, <laughs> come out of retirement. <laughs> Be funny again. Also, uh, I miss Charlie Davis. I don't know if you remember him. I remember Charlie. He, uh, he, he was, you know, he was good folks. I remember I really enjoyed his. You want someone you can call your dog? Get a dog. <laughs> I always enjoyed that bit. Uh, that and he did a lot of pot humor. Oh yeah. Which is funny because I ran into a minister that he knew, and he said, yeah, "I haven't seen Charlie in a while. How is he?" <laughs> Oh man, I, I I don't know where he even is now. Like I forget the last time I saw him. Uh he's actually moved out of town. I, I forget where, but uh, well, I'll I guess I'll have to Facebook him. But there there are a lot of people that have come and gone through Hub City Comedy that I miss. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's so a, so just more regional shows and stuff. Yeah, see. I I'd like to see that. I like to see us get a nice um a nice regional thing going. Get us a nice regional scene a uh, comedy scene going because mm -hmm. mississippi while it's known for being sort of the butt of jokes not known much for its humor in spite of the fact that at one point we had bill hicks he's actually buried here in mississippi yeah, been to his grave i still haven't been there yet i figure i, I need to bring enough um I need to get the guts to try acid first before I go visit his grave oh you won't be able to find like the town that it's bare like he's buried in it's so backwoods that they stop having street signs. Like my friend and I had a guess 
like halfway through the drive, like where that's in Leaksville, isn't Leaksville, it? Leaksville, yeah. Ugh. Well, yeah. it wasn't halfway through. It was about like I don't know. It, we were almost there, and then we turned down the neighborhood, and then all of a sudden, all the street signs there were just none, and so we just had to guess the rest of the way through. And I don't know, but I guess that's a topic for a different time. But uh, I guess we're done with the podcast. Um, Dear I, Lord, was that a full hour? <laughs> Well, no, it doesn't have to be. A, oh, a thank hour. God. Yeah. I can't talk for a full hour. No, but um, what was your, uh, what's the gig that you have going on? Oh, um, the Southeastern Comedy Arts Festival, uh, CCAF. It's um, October the 26th and 27th, mm-hmm. um, happening in Oxford, Mississippi at Ole Miss. Oh, almost forgot. Um, there's also going to be an upcoming show with uh, with my improv troupe, Pants Optional. We don't really have a date hammered down yet but we're going to be doing a crossover show with a long shot uh theater which is an improv group based out of the coast Uh, got a couple of people i've done improv with like uh houston mongeno rob johnson herb wilson i know none of these names mean a damn thing to most of the people who are listening they will i'm trying to get as many people to listen as possible so they can say hey you name dropped me right there (laughs) Let's just go. Let's, next time, let's just print out a list of just all regional comics. <laughs> I'm going to print out my all my Facebook friends, and, and if I happen to be on this show again next time, we'll, I'm just ta- we'll tag them in the video when we put it on Facebook. And that's what we're all do. But uh, so that's going on. So that's uh, what you got coming up. And uh, there's a show this weekend, uh, September 21st. I okay. think it's actually the 22nd. You said it's on Saturday, right? Is it? Yeah, because today's the night. I don't even 19th. know the date of my own show. We're dating it. Today is the 19th, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so yeah, the 22nd is this Saturday. Are you sure? I need to I find think my so. phone. I think so. Yeah, not even we know. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're comedians. We're not calendars. Yeah. What? Oh, man. What the hell am I thinking? Yeah, it's uh, September 22nd. I'm an idiot. Uh but it's September 22nd at Island Strikes uh, in in Gulfport. Uh, it's going to be me, a uh, newcomer, Alex Robertson. I need to stop touting him as that. But uh, <laughs> but he's like the newest and he's performing with us best for seven thing. years. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's uh, gotten up there. He's getting up there pretty fast. But uh, Alex Robertson and uh, Zach Dix, Honoree Kemp, and is hosted by Tommy Rustin. That's another name drop we can put in there. And that will be at 10 p.m. And then um, there are a few other shows, the Alchemy Tavern uh, on the 29th. That's going to be with me, Brittany, and a few Pensacola Mobile comics. And uh, the 28th, there is, a, I guess, a poetry jam uh, at Taste Bar. Uh, I think is at the Taste Bar in uh, Hattiesburg. And then uh, the Big Easy Tavern Show, which is also on September 28th uh, at, in Pensacola. But uh, you can also come to our open mic at McGregor's Pub every Monday. Sign-ups at 8.30. Show starts at 9. Uh, and then also Sidelines is an open mic starting around 8 on every Wednesday. And then uh, Grill and Grocery has an open mic. I think they start at 9. Uh, so, and those are, all three of those are in Hattiesburg. And you can check us on facebook.com slash hubcitycomedy or you can check us on our website at hubcitycomedy.com My name is Mercer Morrison and you've been David Sarton. Thank you for listening.